become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books, scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding. Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookworm here. Today I'd like to talk about how to bring out muscular detail using bronze and silver era methods. Since creating videos on the topic of bronze era bodybuilding methods, I've noticed that there seems to be a lot of interest on how these early iron game pioneers got so ripped and muscular. One of the videos that recently went viral was Sandow's system of bodybuilding which showcased Sandow's light dumbbell system and its popularity back over a hundred years ago. Today I'd like to again touch on the topic after recently having read an article written by Joe Wader in 1950 where he explains that by combining both silver era and bronze era methods one could attain a large muscular and ripped physique. Here we have an excellent example of the kind of muscular physiques the bronze era bodybuilders were capable of achieving. Bobby Pandur has to be one of the most awesome examples of the muscular and ripped physiques from the bronze era. So much so that I'm sure that most of us would be more than satisfied in achieving such a physique. Bobby had a large chest, shoulders and arms, thick thighs and almost paper thin skin. Just look at his ripped muscular abs as proof. I mean, it's just incredible. The man was a beast. And the question really remains, what is it that Bobby Pandur or Eugene Sander or the other bronze era bodybuilders um, like do to, to actually um, have both a large muscular fit, uh, and, and defined physique? I mean, what was it that they did without the use of performance enhancing drugs? This is the big question. And as the article states, it is possible that the combination of both heavy weightlifting using progressive, progressive resistance training and specialized contraction exercises that they practiced back then gave rise to these phenomenal physiques, which is the topic of today's video. After having researched the greats of the past, Joe Wader was preaching the importance of including focused contraction exercises for fat loss and attaining definition by the 1950s. As he put it, the practice of contraction exercises would bring out muscular detail of the trainee, giving them that polished look. The types of exercises he recommended from the bronze era were categorized as follows. Contraction of the muscles using no weights whatsoever. And this basically included flexing in front of a mirror or isometric contraction, which are both in a way forms of muscular control. An art that was actually practiced back then was actually called muscle control. And two, the deliberate and slow contraction exercises as performed in Sandow's or Professor Attila's light dumbbell system. Um, so you basically used very light weights and performed deliberate and slow contractions, really concentrating on the contraction of the muscle. It's not the resistance that actually forces you to contract, but it is your mind and muscle connection to the muscle um, that actually uh, really forces a forceful, a forceful and deliberate contraction. And I've already spoken about this in the light dumbbell system um, that was preached uh, and, and, and uh, practiced by Eugene Sandow back in the bronze era. Um, and using the light dumbbell system, of course, the exercises that were performed were isolation movements. And both of these practices, that is uh, essentially contracting of the muscles using no weights and using the light dumbbell system were both very common and popularized, of course, by some quite famous exponents of the bronze era as we shall now see. The first person I'd like to briefly mention is Max Sick, a German muscle control expert and strongman known, of course, as Maxic. And um, using uh, isometric exercises uh, and, and basically muscular tension control, in his book he mentions, in his book called Muscle Control, how he developed his muscularity using these basic methods, just basically contracting his own muscles without the use of weights. However, Joe Wader does put um, he actually does point out in the article that he, Maxic, was also a very accomplished weightlifter and therefore Joe Wader theorizes that here is another, a good example of how the combination of weightlifting and, and by weightlifting we're talking also about progressive resistance training and by progressively lifting heavier weights you can attain mass over time of course 
and when you practice this alongside with isometric tension exercises and learning muscle control like Maxic preached, it can help bring out the muscular definition and we can clearly see that um, that Maxic, for example in this fantastic photo was quite ripped during this drug-free era. Another excellent example of course is Eugene Sandow who was of course a strongman and bodybuilder and preached the light dumbbell system of training. But here's another example of an accomplished strongman and weightlifter. Again, Joe Wader stresses that the combination of both progressive resistance training and in this case using the light dumbbell system which involves slow deliberate contraction of the muscle through development of mind-muscle connection essentially another form of muscle control can help bring out muscular definition now if we look at some comparisons of Eugene Sander who practiced weightlifting and the light dumbbell system versus his students who only practice the light dumbbell system, we can see why Joe Wader theorized that combining both progressive resistance training with heavy lifting uh, and focused muscular contractions with little or no weight gave one a muscular and defined physique. This is very obvious in both of these photos when we compare, of course, Eugene Sandow here is more massively muscled than his student. Again, in this example, we see that Eugene Sandow, compared to his student, is both better defined and more massively muscled. So the question is, was Joe Wader right? Well, if we look at the evolution of bodybuilding throughout the ages, we see that during the Bronze Era, when the light dumbbell system was practiced, we had very ripped physiques as shown here by the likes of Bobby Pandur. Whilst in the Silver Era, where weightlifting and progressive resistance were practiced heavily, uh, physiques were large and more bulky like that of Clarence Ross as shown here. However, when we move now towards the Golden Era, we see a combination of massive muscular mass with definition. And it is well known that during the Golden Era of bodybuilding, these bodybuilders would, prior to competition, of course, uh, bulk up, but then switch to workouts using lighter weights and focus on faster workouts with little or no rest and high repetitions, a lot, a lot of volume. Reminiscent of bronze era style of high rep, light resistance workouts. Although of course, we all know that uh, performance enhancing drugs also helped in achieving these golden era physiques. However, the point that I'm trying to make here is that if Joe Wader is right, then it may be possible to achieve a large and, mus and, and defined physique naturally by combining both progressive resistance training and the light dumbbell system or isometric contraction. Finally, at the end of the article, Joe Wader recommends for bodybuilders to perform the light dumbbell system in addition to your normal bodybuilding program to develop more definition in your physique and, the, and that the light dumbbell system should be performed on your rest days and it should not replace your progressive resistance style of bodybuilding program. Um, that is not to say that the light dumbbell system cannot help you develop a nice um, physique. It will, of course, but it won't be as massively muscled, of course, if you don't do any progressive resistance training. Now, if you'd like to learn more about the light dumbbell system of training, I have several books written by Eugene Sandow as ebooks available on my website, www.goldenerabookworm.com. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this video on Joe Wader's theory. That is, can bronze era and silver era methods, when you combine, for example, the light dumbbell system or isometric contractions with progressive resistance training, can this combination lead to a ripped and, ma and, and more massive muscular uh, physique? Well, it's a very interesting theory and I think it is very sound and very well worth trying. If you've enjoyed watching the video, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't to the Golden Era book and leave me a comment and thank you for watching. Um, if you'd like to support my work, please donate via PayPal or become a patron. You can visit my website www.goldenerabookworm.com for out of print books. Um, these are scans and therefore they are ebooks. And if you'd like to get in touch to pass on your bodybuilding magazines and books, please contact me via email. Again, hope you've enjoyed the video. This is the Golden Era Bookworm. Bye for now. I just want to recommend this phenomenal book, Vince's Secret Locker, volume number two by Carl Coyne. 
I've been looking at this for about four weeks and I can't put it down. If you get a chance, check it out. He also has a part one that I, I highly recommend also. Uh, Vince was the trainer of the stars and had an amazing, interesting gym that today there's still not equipment like, uh, like it around. It was all made out of wood. Uh, he'll be on our radio show coming up probably in the next couple weeks or so. Have a great day and again, highly recommend this book.